All right, so this is my 30 by 50 shop. As you can see, the front bit of it, 30 feet, is open and the back bit is enclosed. So it came this way, I did not build it this way. I bought the house with the shop and with plans to close it in. That's been the goal from the beginning, to close it in and build it out as just one complete shop, one complete enclosed area. So a little backstory here. I was looking for a house for a while and I really wanted it to have a shop so I could kind of move in and just keep working on my stuff and not have to have any downtime. That was really important to me. And the main motivation for me buying a house was to have a shop because to rent just like a thousand square foot shop and a one bedroom apartment would be more than the mortgage on a house with a shop. That was kind of the logic behind it. So I searched for a while and this actually wasn't the first house that I tried to buy. I had this whole other house that I went through the whole process of buying just for the seller to back out at the last minute right before closing and that was a whole debacle. It was a brick block house with a 28 by 35 brick block shop but the garage on the house is huge. 10 foot ceilings. It was in a great location, really bad neighborhood. It was like one of the only houses in the neighborhood. It was all run down, boarded up window trailers. Um, there were some not great things about it. The house needed a lot of work, but I was kind of excited for that. The idea of renovating it and fixing it up myself and, and making it how I wanted. I, I like doing that. So I thought about it for a while, shot really well with my offer and they accepted it. So that it was super cheap. We ran into some issues with the inspection. Yada yada, hoops jumped through, made it through the whole thing. We're on our way to closing when the seller decided that they wanted to move their elderly mother in instead of putting her in a nursing home. Now, I knew that that was kind of a BS excuse. I mean, what logic does that make? The house needed like the electrical redone. It was all illegal, it was double tapped, and it was a disaster. You're gonna move your elderly mother in here? Come on now. Um, and confirmed, because that house is now up for rent. They cleaned it up. But moral of the story is, that was a, that was a pretty tough blow because I had been looking for a while. That was like the ideal setup. I jumped through all the hoops and here we are and I'm back to square one. So right around that time, this house popped up and this was a really good setup, but it wasn't exactly what I was looking for. So for me, the shop was the priority. The shop was all I really cared about. It could have been a 2,000 square foot shop on a decent lot with a thousand square foot block house that needed to be fully renovated. I would have been good with it. I didn't care about the house, whereas this, was a nice big house, you know, move-in ready, nice inside, didn't really need anything. And then the shop being open. That was obviously a huge uh, hang up for me. So I was out of town when it popped up. We knew it was gonna go fast. My real estate agent came and looked at it for me. She was awesome. Her name is Laura Harms. If you're in central Florida and need a real estate agent, she was great. So she FaceTimed me, everything looked great. One of the things that really sold me was the lot setup. One, the layout, having a wide lot instead of a deep lot, and two, all the vegetation, all the trees. It, it's so nice to have all this shade and privacy, you know, no direct side neighbors. The house looked really nice. After seeing all the issues with the other house, the idea of just having a move-in ready house, you know, was nice. But again, the big hang up was the shop here. So before I put an offer on it, I wanted to make sure that I would be able to close this shop in. So I got in contact with the county with zoning to figure out if I could close it in because what I was worried about was that it was built this way for zoning reasons. So this enclosed area is 600 square feet. Now a lot of places around here, you're allowed 25% the square footage of your house, which isn't a lot, especially if they're going off the inside. So this house being 21, 2200 square feet, seemed like they built this as big as they could and then did the outside open portion as kind of the gray area because it's not enclosed. So that's what I was worried about. That's what I needed to verify. So I got in contact with them. I read the zoning rules for myself, confirmed with them that I would be able to close it in. I could have a shop this size on this property based off the setbacks and the size of the house and all of those factors. All right, cool, we're good. That's all I needed to know. I'm gonna close it in myself. Let's do it. So I did end up buying the house, obviously. We're here, right? <laughs> so the difficulty with closing the shop in myself is that I wouldn't be able to permit it. And at first I wasn't really worried about it, but then after I got here, I'm like, you know, I plan for this place to be long-term for me. I don't wanna be looking over my shoulder and worrying that one day, Someone's gonna show up out of the blue and tell me, oh, you gotta change this, you gotta change this, you gotta pay these fines, you gotta tear it down and start over all the work you did, you know? Because I knew I could do it myself because I've worked in construction before and done a lot of stuff like that, but I realized, you know what, let's just do it right the first time. I'm just gonna pay someone else to do it, a contractor, get it all permitted, make it all legit, and I don't have to worry about it. It's done, dusted, we move on with our lives, we enjoy the space, right? So that was the plan. Now it is surprisingly hard to find someone to do this kind of thing. 
a lot harder than I thought. It's just, it's an odd job closing in a shop. You know, you find people to build a shop or put your doors in or do something like that. But to find someone to close in a shop was tricky and odd and it, it took a while, but I finally found someone. So the first company I found came and they were super professional. They seemed like they do a really good job, but they almost seemed too professional for me. I'm like, do I really need, I mean, it's simple. It's just putting some skin on the walls, building a frame at the front, putting some roll up doors. Like it's really not that complicated, right? Um, and on top of that, their price was a lot higher than I was expecting. And I, I shot higher than a lot of my friends on what it would cost, but theirs was a lot higher than that. So I tried to find someone else, and again, not an easy thing to find. It took me a little bit. I finally found another company. Um, they had good reviews. They were like a recommendation from someone of someone kind of thing. And um, they came and quoted me basically like a little more than half of what the other cost was going to be. Now, there were some differences between the two quotes as far as how they were going to do it. So the first quote, they were going to frame all of this, the front, the sides, out of steel second quote wood granted mind you this is uh you know a while ago steel wood's probably three times the cost it was then secondly the more expensive company was going to take all this siding off and replace these panels entirely the cheaper company was just going to overlap new panels you know to meet up with those so it wasn't just a quality versus cheaper kind of thing like there were reasons why the one quote was cheaper but at the end of the day i'm like this is a 23 year old shop you know, this thing is not um, in pristine condition. I just need it closed in and functional. Let's go the cheaper route. They seem like they're gonna be able to knock it out super quick. Cool, so I move forward with that. Things seemed like they were going well. They found this material since the shop's 23 years old. This wall material, they don't really make it anymore in this spacing with these ribs. They managed to find the exact material and get it ordered. Great. But then we came into permitting and that's where things just go straight downhill. They started the permitting deal and they're like, yeah, we should have the permit in a couple weeks. So a couple weeks go by and they're like, oh, we should have it this weekend. I'm like, all right, cool. Another week goes by, oh, you know, we'll have it this weekend. All right, cool, no worries, you know. I get it, stuff takes time. And then about three weeks goes by of just radio silence. And I'd email them once a week and say, look, you know, like if you guys are busy and you got the permit and you just can't get it done right now, that's cool, I get it. I'm not in any rush. I mean, I'd like to get it done, but that's okay. I just want to know if the permit's been approved or not. At this point, I know nothing. I just know, oh, we're going to have it this weekend. That's all I've been told. I haven't been told if it's been reviewed, if they've accepted it, if they're asking for things, nothing. I just want to know that because I'm stressing and worried that for some reason they're going to say no. And then I'm going to be stuck with the shop that's open, which I do not want. The whole, this whole thing hinged on me being able to close this shop in. So after weeks of not hearing back from them, I finally emailed the city itself. We are running out of room, let me tell you. So the city got back to me and said, hey, you know, the permit was applied for on this date. Uh, went to zoning on this date, they approved it. Uh, the plan reviewer asked for these two things. This is what we need. All right, cool. So I get back in touch with the contractor. Contractor, we go back and forth, and he's like, all right, I'm gonna get him the stuff. Uh, I'll get it to him this week. Same thing happens. Three, four weeks go by, radio silence, me emailing once a week, I hear nothing, nothing at all. So I emailed the city again to see what they had to say, and they come back to me with, we're still waiting on those two things that we asked for a month ago. So I get in touch with the contractor yet again, this time he finally answers me, and he's like, I'll get it to him right now. Um, so about a week of going back and forth, he finally does indeed get it to them. I'm like, all right, cool, we're getting somewhere. But then it wasn't right. They needed this thing, and they needed that thing, and this cover page, or whatever. They go back and forth, they finally sort it out. They finally have the two things they asked for. It's back in permit review. We're good now, right? Like these are the two things they asked for. If they needed more things, if there were any more question marks, they would have asked, right? Wrong, wrong. So we get back about two weeks later, now they want four more things. Three of them are arbitrary stuff like the first few were, right? Just like small, like what brand hurricane straps are gonna be used. But the one that was the real kicker was they wanted signed and sealed architectural drawings to verify that, you know, this, this was designed originally as an open structure and it was being closed in, that the way they proposed to close it in, it would meet current wind codes, uh, like 2020 wind codes. And 
the contractor was straight up like, yeah, I can't help you with that one. You know, I'm like, you're on your own. So, like, all right, cool. So I started looking around, trying to find an architect or an engineer to do this with very little information, right? Like, I don't really know what I'm asking for. So I look around, I try my best. I can't really find anybody. But then it dawned on me. The first quote I had got, in the estimate, they literally had signed and sealed architectural drawings listed as a cost. So I'm like, you know, this is one of those things, man. It's, you get what you pay for. I mean, I screwed up. I'm trying to go the cheaper route. If I had just gone with the more legit company, we would have been done with this by now. So I got in contact with them, explained, you know, what had happened, where we we're at, and they were Johnny on the spot, man. They got in contact with the city to figure out I don't want to overflow this. Still got some room. To figure out if and how they could take over the permitting process, you know, what that would entail. They got in touch with the architects and engineers they used to figure out what information they would need to determine if, you know, they could get them what the city was asking for. So he came by and grabbed the original architecture drawings of the shop. Luckily I had them, they came with the house. And he got those scanned and sent over to the architects and the engineers. And they came back was basically, guys, we should probably all agree not to do this project because it's gonna be one of those things where at the end of the day, no one's gonna be happy. Uh, it might probably end up costing more than just building a new shop entirely. And the reason for that is inside. Alright, so the reasoning was if they were to close in the front as they proposed up to 2021 wing codes, it would become one big building right so that would mean that now the enclosed portion that's already been built and enclosed would need to be brought up to 2020 Winco's, which would mean reframing this entire room which as most of you probably know that would be quite an undertaking to literally rebuild the walls to be up to the 2020 win codes so that was kind of the the roadblock to moving forward with the plan of closing in the shop um, that was kind of a big dilemma. At this point, I'm like, well, is the foundation even good enough to build a new shop if I were to tear this one down? And we're like back to square one. I bought this house for the shop, and now I might have to tear down the shop. So I wanted to kind of examine all my options. I had a company come out that builds shops to kind of check the slab out, look at the plans, and tell me if, you know, the, at least the foundation was suitable to build a new shop. So they came out, they said the foundation was good, um, that they could build a new shop, but they were also kind of like, I was feeling where are you really gonna tear down a perfectly good shop? I'm like, I really don't want to, you know, but I, I don't want to go on with this being open. Like my whole thing was to close this in and have a normal shop here. So we thought about some options, right? One option was basically tear down the open portion and then build another shop right here and like leave this one alone, which would make it easier because I could store my stuff in there while this one was being built, so on and so forth. However, the truss doesn't land here at this wall, right? So there's no, the truss is past it or before it. So we would have to get like some one-off double-ended truss that would have to be permitted by itself to go there to end that wall to like separate this as its own building. Back to the complications, just like trying to close in the shop, odd permitting stuff, it'd take months to get that trust, wasn't a viable option. The other option I found was kind of a gray area one. So a carport is kind of permitted the exact same way whether it has walls or doesn't have walls. So my thought was, I build out the walls, right? And then put like a six foot gate here at the front, like an aesthetic gate, boom, going across. And then I can close it up kind of, but I'm still gonna have this huge open area. You know, someone could still just jump the fence and come in. I can't just close it up and be completely, you know, private. Uh, it's still not ideal. So, and then the last option obviously is just to tear the whole dang thing down and build a new one. Now, again, that's a tough one for me. Tough pill to swallow, but I, I ended up deciding to go that route. And there's a few reasons why. So I can't go much bigger on perimeter or footprint of the shop 
Um, it, I could get maybe another 200 square feet and stay within the zoning rules, but it's not really worth pouring new concrete for that. But what I can do with a new shop is go significantly higher. So my current walls, 11 and a half feet tall. I can go 16 feet tall on the walls with a, a less aggressive roof pitch, which is pretty much the standard roof pitch now. So that means I can gain a lot of upward storage. I mean, with pallet racking, you're talking two full shelves, and I could build a loft at 10 feet and still have a full six feet of height all the way out at the ends. So that was a big plus for me. Because I like the idea of having a nice big loft, but currently with the roof height and my current loft, I mean, you have to call around on your hands and knees up there. So imagine I could have a loft this high or higher and be able to stand all the way out to the edges. Not only that, but building new, I can kind of set everything up how I want. So I don't have to have this wall here anymore. Moving to one big open space, I can move my lifts instead of having one here and one here and kind of the rest of this blocked. I can take them both, put them at an angle on this side so the cars would be here and then have this whole area open. Now with 16 foot ceilings, I can do 12 foot high doors, which means if I leave myself enough room, I could back my enclosed trailer in here if I wanted to. Or just at a bare minimum, being able to pull a car in here and work on interior stuff. You know, when you don't need the lift, it's always kind of in the way when it's like this, because either you're kind of too far behind it to shut the door to get to everything, or you're too far ahead of it and you're kind of crammed into the stuff up there. So having just at least one open space, if I need to work on my thumb ends or something like that would be really nice. So I really like the idea of that layout. Obviously it's gonna be a little bit trickier to get cars in and out, but I'm not moving cars in and out all day. You know, I'm not a normal shop, I'm just working on my own stuff. Stuff normally goes on the lift and stays on there for a little while. So the other thing would be not having this wall here. I could do a loft probably at least 10 feet off the back wall all the way across the back. And I'd like to have an L that comes off maybe another eight to 10 feet, depending, with stairs. I have that kind of island section as like a hangout spot. You know, have a couch up there, have a TV up there, um, just a nice chill spot. And then we would have tons of storage on the loft because it being tall enough to stand up there, we could put shelves, we could put two rows of shelves. So it would drastically increase our storage situation. And having a cool hangout spot up above everything, looking down on the cars on the lifts, like I, that sounds pretty cool to me. I'm also gonna put an eight by eight bay door at the back here. So if I ever build a wing to off the back, I can roll up the door and get out there to get to wheels and tires and things like that. We'll have a normal man door there because there's a little landing out here. So we'll have a door there, windows in the back, windows on this side so you can kind of look in from the house and then a man door up here in the front corner and have you know a little concrete deal there so i can just walk up the driveway boom door right into the shop and then again two 12 by 12 bay doors so that's the main bulk of the the layout itself so the layout change to me is a big benefit um, and cost wise it's really not dramatically different you know even not taking into account the dramatic increase in steel and wood prices since i got those quotes because the cheap quote was wood more expensive quote with steel, um, it's really only like a third more to build a whole new shop than it would have been to do it with the more expensive quote. And you know, in the grand scheme of things, that's really not bad. Now we are gonna have to do new things, like we're gonna have to do new electrical, but we kinda really were gonna have to do that with this place anyway, because there is no electrical out here besides a box there and an outlet there. Otherwise, there's nothing. So electrical would have to be ran for, you know, outlets along this wall, light switches ideally by the door where you come in, um, lots of things like that. Not to mention, I currently only have 50 amp service out here. I really would like 100 amp coming off the house. So I really need to upgrade the service to the shop anyway. Um, so some of the electrical would have to be done regardless. But I wanna take it a bit further than that. I want to kind of do everything that I wanna do. You know, if we're building the whole thing from scratch, might as well do all the things that are a lot easier to do when you're first building the place. So for example, I want to go ahead and insulate the whole building, insulate the ceiling, insulate the walls, 
Again, get all new electrical done, have 240 volt outlets everywhere I could possibly need them. So it's not something I have to add on later or deal with later. I also want to go ahead and drywall it. So my plan was to drywall, insulate, and AC the inside of this room. But after being here, I realized it would kind of require gutting the whole room, building a drop ceiling. There's kind of a lot that would go into trying to finish this out like I'd want to. But with a whole new shop, it's easy enough to do it from the start. Since we'll have it insulated, another kind of dream thing of mine, since this is really kind of turning into my dream shop build, because, you know, while we're at it, I want to AC it with a legit AC unit. And I, this is something I've always wanted, right? AC shop, you know, life goals kind of thing. But every time me and a friend talk about it, it always comes up, well, it would be so expensive to AC a shop. But I came to the realization that you know, most of the houses I've lived in were not very well insulated. In the summertime, the AC would run pretty much 24-7. It would pretty much run all day, all night. And your electric bill goes up, maybe at most, worst case, 250, 300 bucks a month. So even if it's 300 bucks a month, because like the AC can't run any more than all the time, that's really not a lot in the grand scheme of things. That's $10 a day to be comfortable in a cool environment for 12 hours a day that I'm out here working. To me, that is worth every penny. So that is something I'm really excited about. Since we're able to build it from scratch and insulate it and set it all up for that, we can AC it. So that's something that'll be huge. That'll make that hangout area feasible. Otherwise it would be super hot up there. And I mean, we're only gonna be ACing it probably six, eight months out of the aisle. It's Florida, it's hot all the time. We very get, rarely get cold days, but we're not gonna be ACing it all the time. We're not gonna be ACing it at night. So I think it's feasible to do it. And again, I'm really excited for the, the prospect of that, the idea of that. So now that I've settled with the idea of building a whole new shop, having the taller ceilings and having all of those things, I really wouldn't even want to go back to closing this in if that option became available. It's one of those things I've got to sacrifice for now, but it'll just be so much better in the long run. But there are some big sacrifices required. The main thing is the time. Like the money, obviously it's gonna cost more than it was gonna cost if I do all these other things, right? It is gonna be expensive, but I'm okay with putting money into my shop. You know, we put so much money into our cars and trucks and at the end of the day, it's just a car. The shop is something that feels more permanent to me and, and more useful. I love my cars and the whole point of the shop is to build the cars, but I care more about setting up my shop and having a nice shop, my dream shop, than building some other car to have like my dream car. The shop is, is the thing that makes me the happiest, I guess. But the sacrifices, there are some sacrifices that have to be made. So. There is a wait list for the shops. Tons of people are buying shops, especially the metal shops because wood's gone up. So even block shops are more expensive. Wood shops are way more expensive. So a lot of people are buying them. So there's a wait list. The thing about the wait list is it's gonna be like a three to four month wait. And that's after the site is ready, meaning the permit is approved and this shop is torn down. So basically we're gonna be without a shop for about three months. Now we're closing in on the end of the permitting, hopefully. I was trying to wait to make this video until the permitting was like a done deal, just because I have gone through so many ups and downs with permitting, like it's gonna be fine, no it's not fine, it's gonna be fine, no it's not, you know? Uh, so I really wanted that to be confirmed, hopefully, before, but it's, you know, there's tons of people buying for permits. So that's, it's been like a month and a half. So hopefully we hear back on that soon. Once that's done, we get on the wait list and we got to tear this place down. That again becomes the complicated part. That is going to be the biggest struggle. So here's my plan. I'm going to set my garage up as a temporary workshop. Now I think this is plenty big enough to have a good solid workspace in here. You know, I can have my welding table, my grinder. I think I can put my tire machine and my air compressor over in that corner because I definitely can't go without a tire machine for three months. So over the coming weeks, I want to spruce this place up. You know, I want to paint it. I want to update the lighting and things like that. And then we'll set this up as the workshop for now. The biggest thing we're going to be missing out on is a lift, but luckily I still have my quick jacks. So a lot of people have tried to buy these things from me and I've always held on to them in case I needed them. What do you know? I'm gonna need them. So again, that's gonna be the biggest sacrifice. Just once you get used to working on a lift, it is pretty hard to go back to laying on your back, sliding under a car to get to things. But sacrifice now, we'll be better off later. Um, so the other difficulty is gonna be, obviously I could fit all my stuff in there from the shop, but then I wouldn't have anywhere to work. So, you know, we've already got a lift in there that I haven't even opened yet because it was gonna go here and I've been waiting for this to get closed in. 
So we've got a bunch of shop equipment and stuff that we're gonna have to store while we wait for the new shop to be built. Uh, so my plan for that is to get a 20 foot container and shove it in that back corner there. Now, for the amount of stuff I have and I'm gonna store in there, it'd really be ideal to have a 40 foot, but I wanna keep it long term. So I don't wanna to try to fit a 40 foot back here and have this area all crammed. 20 foot will be nice long term. It'll be a little too small short term, but I think we can make it work. So we'll store, you know, the lifts, uh, wheels and tires, parts that we don't need access to, engine blocks, transmissions. We'll just have to shove all of that stuff in there for now. And then once the shop is done, it'll be nice to have a separate storage area for things like, you know, body parts, bumpers, and things like that. Tires, you know, because a lot of times I'll go to the track, I'll burn off five sets of tires, so 10 tires, I'll dismount them. I don't wanna go 30 minutes to the dump to throw away 10 tires. I wanna wait till I've got 20, 30, you know, a truckload full. So I can kind of just keep the tires in the container until I have a truckload full and boom, take them. So point is, you know, the container is kind of dual purpose. It'll get us by for now with storage. Hopefully we might have to like rent a pod for the rest of it and then we'll have it long term. So that is the big sacrifice. That is definitely going to be a struggle, but I think in the end it'll be worth it. And the reason I'm willing to, to make those sacrifices now is, you know, this place is a long term thing for me, this house. I'm, I'm not here thinking, oh, I'm gonna keep this place for two, three years and then I'm gonna upgrade to a bigger, better house and a bigger blah, blah, blah. Like, this is everything I need, this place. You know, that's one thing about the house. You know, as much as I didn't want a big house, it is nice because we can grow into it. I'm really happy with this spot. Unless I was able to get myself like 50 acres and build a 10,000 square foot shop, like I really don't need anything else in this. This place, especially after living here, is perfect. Again, the lot is amazing. I love the location. I love the neighborhood, super quiet street amazing neighbors you know that's always a huge struggle especially being a car guy finding good neighbors and i have the best neighbors you could ever ask for they're not just like tolerant neighbors like they're cool they'll come over and help me with stuff i'll go over help them with stuff like they're into it we're all cool we're all like essentially friends like it's that's a big thing you know you never know what your neighbors are going to be like so in every way i'm super happy with this place and even knowing what i know now that i'm gonna have to tear this place down and build a new shop at first i was like man i should have just bought somewhere else like you know, I'm gonna have to build a shop anyway. I would have been better off. But in reality, I looked at anything with more than half an acre. I wasn't just looking at stuff with shops and there weren't any better options now or then, you know? So at the end of the day, I'm still really happy with it, even knowing what I know now. So, you know, it's one of those things where sacrifice now, time and money, and then, you know, to hopefully reap the benefits in the future. You know, unless some unforeseen circumstances come and I have to leave this place, you know, hopefully I'll have it for a very long time and we'll have a nice big shop that's built exactly how we want it. So it's definitely gonna be a venture and an adventure, like it's, it's a thing, but again, it'll be worth it in the end. So that is the deal. Like I said, sorry, those of you who've been wondering what the deal is, I, I apologize it took so long. I was trying to wait for the permit to happen and it, it hasn't happened yet. So hopefully we hear back on that soon. I will let you guys know. Um, if you wanna support the uh, shop build venture, we have new shirts. So we have the garage built pocket tees and we have the jibber jabber shirts and then we have pretty much everything in stock. We are running a little low on the jibber jabber tees, but um, definitely check out some merch in the link below or just give this video a thumbs up. You know, whatever you wanna do, all of it helps. So yeah, long winded, but that is the deal. My plan is to try to set everything up to happen, boom, boom, boom. So once we hopefully get the permit and we have a date of the shop build, I wanna try to schedule, you know, getting that spray foam, getting the drywall done, getting the electrical done, all of that kind of right after it's built so we can kind of do all that before we move back in and get it done quick so you know if you have a company that does electrical drywall um spray foam insulation epoxy floors i also plan to epoxy the floors as well um, i might do that myself might get it professionally done just so it lasts longer but if you do any of those things shoot me an email you can find my business email in the link down below but yeah hopefully we can plan it all out and it all goes smoothly and uh, within six months, we're sitting in our new shop, building our loft and working on cars. So that's gonna be it, guys. Uh, thank you for watching. Thanks for subscribing. I'll see you next time.